Now, let's discuss about how medicine has enhanced our lifespan and the quality of life. So this slide shows human life expectancy changes. So this left one will show the life expectancy as a year uh, with respect to the years after um, AD. So this is very interesting to see. You see our humans only lived maybe even less than 20 years old in the you know, thousands of years ago. And this has been growing very slowly until 1500, like only like 30, 40 years old. And you realize this in 2000 and maybe 1800 years, there's a dramatic increase in the life expectancy. So our human life expectancy has increased dramatically for the past 20 years. And what happened here is a big question. So can you imagine what happens with this? And also in the right side, uh, there's another uh, data showing the more recent uh, after 1840 until over 2000, you can see the life expectancy has been almost linearly growing. And this is a dramatic one. Every year, the life expectancy has been, uh, um, has been grow for about a month. So what made this increase is uh, possible. And you can think of various reasons and I'm gonna try to explain my own view. So first as a medicine. So the, the discovery of back, uh, vaccines and for um, curing bacterial infection or virus infection has been uh, dramatically increased uh, our human um, treatment from these diseases and also sanitation uh, to providing a sewage system in human civilization has prevented a lot of diseases and we start to realize the importance of clean water and the presence of small germs, bacteria, and how to clean those water and drinking clean water has been greatly increasing our human life expectancy. So, especially at the birth to in youth, the death rate has been dramatically decreased with the modern medical care and medical system. And at the same time, at the older age, our healthcare has been better. So we prevent uh, people who are living longer from dying from disease and that has been affected. So this is only a reference slide. Uh, I just want to point out human life expectancy throughout the ages. So early human beings did not generally live long enough to develop modern killer, which is heart disease, cancer, or even loss of mental function. So you can see average life expectancy in Neanderthal, like only 30 years and they were suffering from malnutrition. And this Neolithic times, uh, a lot of fecal contamination, water, and disease, uh, such as cholera, smallpox, typhoid, polio, and influenza. Because of this, people only lived up to about 38 years old. And classical Greece and Rome, and fever, smallpox, tuberculosis, and those contagious disease makes people even live shorter. And in medieval period, still it's not that long. And sometimes the Black Death and these wiped out a lot of populations in the whole Europe and Asia, and it comes over and over. Now, in 1900, now we have a better healthcare, sanitation, and living condition boost life expectancy. And today, people live even average over 80 years old and 
cancer, heart disease, and stroke are the biggest killer in the developed world. So now, because this lecture is in Korea, uh, and Korea is very interesting country that starting 1948 from world's one of the poorest country to have a fast growth now entering into developed country. So looking at the cause of that over time might be giving some insight. So let's take a look from data from Statistics Korea. So this is from 1996, 2006, 2012, and 2015, and very recent 2018. And this is top causes of death. And when you can notice that the top killer recently has been always cancer, which means people are now living long enough to die from cancer. And let's take a quick look at the other second killer, which is cerebral vascular disease. Very interestingly, this cerebral vascular disease becoming a little bit of a less killer. And the reason we can see is cardiac disease becoming growing and growing. And now cardiac disease become the second killer in South Korea. What's interesting here is even in let's say about 25 years ago, auto accident was a top killer, one of the big killer and it becomes down and we don't see it anymore. So that reflects the society as, as a system and there's a lot of auto accidents before, now it is becoming very rare. And also one thing you can notice is diabetes has been pretty high in this list. And even surprisingly, you can see suicides are growing, growing, growing until 2012. And still it's become very high killer. So this is very unfortunate uh, reflecting the stress living in South Korea. And also one thing you can notice is pneumonia has been growing, entering into killer list as the sixth in 2012, 15, and 18. So pneumonia is inflammation in the lung, and this become uh, a big cause of death in South Korea. So that's what we see here. And we can ask a question, why are cancer and vascular disease top killer now in industrialized countries? Maybe this is a disease maybe very relevant for people who live long enough and also the diet and the lifestyle will affect to cause this cancer and vascular disease. So this is another chart uh, comparing developing and developed countries. It gives us some idea of what's happening. The data is coming from World Health Organization. Let's look at the left side, developing countries. The top causes of that here was HIV, so-called human immunodeficiency virus, or the symptom as ACE is acquired immune deficiency syndrome. This is a huge number of that. And you can see lower respiratory infections, usually causing um, an infectious disease, and ischemic heart disease, and diarrhea, cerebrovascular, and childhood disease. Malaria is pretty high, and tuberculosis is still very high. And you can see chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, usually caused by a very long-term use of uh, uh, smoking, and this will cause a problem in your lung, in the constriction, and emphysema uh, of the lung function becoming worse and it affects the patient to hard to breathe and measures. And on the contrary, you can see in developed countries, this ischemic heart disease is a pretty high top killer. Here, ischemic means um, a lack of 
enough blood supply to an organ, uh, in this case, in the heart. And you can see cerebrovascular disease is pretty high, and somehow this chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, is a pretty high. This usually comes with a, um, a long tobacco use. And we can also see lower respiratory infections and lung cancer and car accidents. Somehow here, maybe there's not many cars there. And stomach cancer, you see, notice that cancer is high on the list and hypertensive heart disease and tuberculosis and suicide is not shown here, but shown in developed countries. So this shows us some insight and now let's look at a little more details. This is a recent data in 2016 and I was putting this as top 10 causes of death, low income and high income countries. So you can see the death rate here, low respiratory infection, diarrheal disease, HIV, malaria, tuberculosis, and these are the red color means communicable disease, which means the disease which can be transmissible or infectious disease. So we see a lot of this communicable disease are top killers in low income countries. On the contrary, let's see how about high income countries. And now we see more of blue colors, which is ischemic heart disease, stroke, and dementia from Alzheimer's disease and trachea, bronchus, lung cancers and COPD and except lower respiratory infections, colon, rectum cancer and diabetes mellitus is one of this kidney disease and breast cancer, a lot of cancers. And these blues are non-communicable disease, which means these diseases are not transmissible uh, from one person to another. So it shows a, a contrast that develop low-income countries has lots of communicable disease while high-income countries, the death cause is a lot are from non-communicable disease. 